How much credit card debt do you actually owe? Your terms and conditions say that you have an interest rate of x equals 14.99% as an annual percentage rate or APR. To understand an APR, we need to understand interest compounded according to different schedules. Start with $10,000 on January 1st. If your credit card company applies interest only once at the end of the year, then your debt, assuming you make no additional charges, is 100% plus 14.99% or 1.1499 times its original value. $10,000 grows to $11,499. Alternatively, one-twelfth of your APR could be applied once every month. After tacking on a twelfth of 14.99% of interest to your debt at the end of each month, you have 12 copies of 100% plus one-twelfth of 14.99% multiplied against $10,000, or $11,606. If your credit card company increases your debt at the end of each day by a 365th of 14.99%, your initial $10,000 is multiplied 365 times by 1 plus a 365th of 0.1499. This grows to $11,617. The stair-step corners at the end of each day are very small and hard to see on this plot. Applying interest once a year gives the huge yellow stair step. Compounding interest monthly gives the much more diagonal looking red staircase. And compounding interest daily gives a staircase whose granularity is difficult to see. The debt owed after a year seems to be stabilizing around $11,617. If the credit card company subdivides the year into n time periods and increases your debt by an nth of your APR each time period, what is the interest owed at the end of the year? If the number n of time periods grows without bound, is there a value that this quantity, 1 plus x over n all taken to the nth power, approaches? The equal with two dots indicates a definition. The symbol e to the x is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth power of 1 plus x over n. We call this e to the x as though it were a number e taken to a power x. But from the immediate definition on the screen, we only know of e to the x as the limit of an expression containing a binomial motivated from discussing compound interest. A definition of an object in terms of a limiting process is not necessarily convenient. To work with e to the x using mostly simple arithmetic, let's express e to the x in terms of a series expansion. The yellow parentheses enclose a binomial with the first term, uh, here that's 1, added to a second term, that's x over n, all of that taken to the nth power. Recall that the binomial theorem relates such an expression to a sum from k equals 0 to n of n factorial over n minus k factorial k factorial multiplied by the first term, meaning 1, taken to the n minus kth power, multiplied by the second term, meaning x over n, taken to the kth power. There's a piece corresponding to the first term, a piece corresponding to the second term, and coefficients derived from combinatorics. 1 taken to a power, for example, the n minus kth power, is just 1, which is not usually written out explicitly in a product. We will exchange the locations where we write the turquoise k factorial and the turquoise n taken to the kth power. We can expand this expression into a big mess. The yellow n factorial is partially written out as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so forth all the way down to the factor n minus k plus 1, then n minus k, and then n minus k minus 1 factorial, where this last factorial symbol helps us avoid writing down even more factors. The k powers of turquoise n are written out as a product with some factors implied by the turquoise ellipsis. The orange n minus k factorial is written out as n minus k times n minus k minus 1 factorial. The yellow and orange n minus k times n minus k minus 1 factorial cancel out, leaving k yellow factors upstairs and k turquoise factors downstairs out front. Move all of this stuff up the page for space. Physicists do sloppy things. If you want to see how to do this correctly, you can look around the internet. As n becomes arbitrarily large, the various factors enclosed in parentheses become arbitrarily close to 1. 
The sum also consists of more and more terms, so this limiting process points us to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial, which written out explicitly is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so forth. This is the quantity e to the x. The preceding manipulations are quick ways to remind ourselves of the series expansion for e to the x starting from the idea of compound interest. We are not performing formal proofs. Consideration of interest compounded according to schedules with arbitrarily brief, though all the while finite, compounding time periods leads to a limiting value of debt at the end of the year, $10,000 times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. This is called compounding continuously. For this credit card agreement, the APR x equals 0 0.1499. The sum written out contains terms that quickly become successively insignificant because a fraction less than 1, taken to higher and higher powers, decreases. You can check by calculating these terms by hand that the sum very quickly settles down to $11,617. Compounding interest daily in this case generates the same amount of debt at the end of the year as compounding continuously to the displayed precision. We have just convinced ourselves that e to the x, defined as the result of a limiting process related to compound interest, can be written out as a series expansion. In the following modules, we will demonstrate some properties justifying notating e to the x as though it were some number e taken to a power x, as though it were an exponential function.